Good morning, everybody. I'm going to ask you to kind of open your, your eyes and your mind to kind of a broader view. What I was um, asked by the aquarium to kind of look at were what we were doing environmentally in Charleston. And so we're, it's going to be beyond plastics. Um, I was very excited to be able to give a shout out to a lot of my nonprofit and local colleagues. And it was perhaps overzealous in the number of slides that I gave the aquarium. So some of them I'm going to just kind of skim through in order to meet my time clock. I do have, um, it's essential that our work rely on the work of academicians, our state and our, our federal partners. I have not included you in this because I had to have some boundaries in what I shared with you. What I submit that you'll find is that we have some exemplary work happening here. But what I also feel is that we have a conservation and a stewardship ethic that is active, engaged, focused, and it's focused on expanding our knowledge and offering a great platform from which to build a lot more. So starting with city programs, the city of Charleston started its first farmer's market three, almost three decades ago, believing in its great placemaking capability as well as its health and economic benefits. Just last year, we added the West Ashley Farmer's Market. The city has eight publicly available EV charging stations and city garages where recharging is available at no cost. The city has benefited from an energy savings contract for over 15 years, resulting in a 16% reduction in the city's current energy usage. This program offers businesses from the size of Boeing to small digital startups a framework for setting goals to reduce energy, water, and waste while buying local and offering a support system for achieving them. We've just concluded our fifth year, making us the second longest running workplace challenge, green workplace challenge in the U.S. We have one green roof um, in Marion Square uh, in the city of Charleston, but we have multiple ones on public hospitals as well as commercial and residential locations. This is one of Charleston's oldest homes from about 1700. Our preservation ethic and our BAR work to protect the embodied energy that it took to, for the construction of this and all of our other historic properties. Keep Charleston Beautiful focuses on forming great habits for trash disposal and cleanups of those areas in need. Our Recreation Department sponsors this program offering Saturday and after school as well as summer environmental camps to inspire our next generation. Currently we have a Trees as Green Infrastructure grant looking at the value of, that, of trees for stormwater purposes. The city has an alternative incentive-based zoning code for this area that allows owners to choose to build taller and denser in return for implementing eco-oriented practices such as car sharing, increased pervious surfaces, improved stormwater quality, renewable energy, energy efficient design, and much more. This is a handy event guide for making your event as sustainable as possible and it happens to reference the aquarium's good catch program. Transitioning to our policies and our plans, City Council passed a resolution supporting distributed renewable energy. That resolution was passed um, just before some major state legislation was passed and just offered a small bit of support. City Council last year adopted a sea level rise strategy, including the city planning for 2.5 feet of sea level rise over the next 50 years. When NOAA and the Army Corps of Engineers update their sea level rise curve based on scientists advancing knowledge, the city is committing to reviewing and updating our planning standards. From this and other initiatives, Mayor Tecklenburg has appointed the city's first chief resilience officer. City Council also passed a resolution supporting offshore wind energy. The federal offshore leasing process for wind energy development um, off South Carolina's shores has started. Another resolution that City Council approved was opposing offshore drilling and seismic testing. Mayor Tecklenburg, while a candidate, offered a stellar and clever video in support of this resolution. I encourage you to Google it. Now, moving on to our nonprofit and our other local government partners. Carolina Clear works with local government education partners to encourage water pollution prevention. 
Their education includes the values of rain gardens, pond management, and the Carolina Yard Program. This soon-to-be launched bike share program will offer an affordable, convenient, and eco-friendly mode of transportation for traveling around our city. We are also in discussions regarding enhancing modes of transportation via car sharing and water taxis. Charleston Moves advocates for enhanced conditions for walking and biking. Some of their key initiatives are access from the Charleston Battery to our adjacent beaches, finding a bike-friendly crossing for the Ashley River, and enhancing safe biking. Charleston County Composting processes almost 60,000 tons of organic waste a year and was the first in the state to initiate an a voluntary food waste composting program. Charleston Resilience Network is a volunteer group working to foster resilience of communities to natural disasters and coastal environmental ha hazards. They focus on providing science-based and educational forums and strengthening our region's unified strategy. Charleston Rises is a new local building certification program offered by the Sustainability Institute. It is LEED-like, but it's less expensive, more convenient, offering more locally relevant strategies and a quick turnaround. The image on the left is Charleston's first net zero building, which is proposed to be built on Upper King Street and is a pilot for the RISES program. Charleston Waterkeeper pursues clean water to promote swimmable, fishable, and drinkable water through water quality monitoring, vessel sewage pump outs, reviewing permits, patrolling, and educating. The wind turbine testing facility allows manufacturers of wind turbines to simulate a variety of conditions and to test their innovations. The 15 megawatt hardware in the loop grid simulator supports education, research, economic development to speed new electrical technologies to the market. This e-grid can simulate the electrical grid of any country in the world. Now, Charleston was one of the first foodie communities, and that's evidenced by the diverse array of community gardens and farms. For example, the Medical University of South Carolina has an urban farm which focuses on teaching gardening and the health benefits of local produce. Many other gardens exist, including ones for low-income neighborhoods. One farm exists solely to provide fresh food to produce and produce to shelters and food banks. Still other farms focus on recruiting the next generation of farmers. The dash is a free way for you to get around downtown Charleston, allowing residents and visitors to keep their cars parked. Grow Food Carolina gives local farmers access to the sales, marketing, logistics, warehousing, and distribution functions that had previously only been available to large-scale industrial farms. Low Country Local First cultivates an economy anchored in local ownership, encouraging both buying and eating local. In 2014, state legislators passed, paved the way for a solar revolution in South Carolina. In the second quarter of 2016, there was a 2,000% increase over the same quarter the year before. Clearly, we are in our infancy. Coastal Conservation League has worked for over 25 years to protect natural landscapes, abundant wildlife, clean water, and our quality of life. Their members and staff advocate for solutions that will make South Carolina coast a better place to live. Audubon's climate report found that half of North American birds are at risk from climate change. To document the, and the range of the impact, Audubon has launched a new science project called Climate Watch with chapters in the state surveying. The Charleston chapter of Surfrider concentrates on keeping our beaches and our waterways free of trash, including their ocean-friendly restaurant program. The Sustainable Warehouse does full-scale deconstructions to collect reusable materials that would otherwise end up in the landfill. Everything they recover is ab available for the, to the public for reuse, which promotes future initiatives. Sustainability Institute 
focuses on empowering conservation of energy and reduction of our environmental footprint where we live and work. They just celebrated their 200th energy retrofit on low-income homes, providing much-needed savings on energy bills. One of the aquarium's programs is called RICE. RICE stands for Resilience Initiative for Coastal Education. Over the past year, meetings along the South Carolina and Georgia coast have provided information and resources on the impacts of sea level rise, bridging the gap between science and policy. And even our arts organizations care about the environment. Enough Pie has assembled a team of artists, scientists, and thought leaders to shine a light on the rising waters of, through 14 art installations that will happen later this spring. Charleston's progress in environmental stewardship relies heavily on our ability to learn, to respect, to collaborate, and to adapt. I think you'll agree the dialogue is rich and the potential is even greater. Thank you.